Welcome to the Sports Scouting Report Podcast with Lee Brickeen. Hi, everyone. Lee Brickeen. Hope everybody's having a great Friday. I hope everybody's healthy and safe. And, and if you're driving around trying to get groceries or doing things you're supposed to have that you have to do, right? Um, hope you enjoy the show today. We've got a great show. We're going to have about five topics, which is going to be based on Madison Prep High School. Um, also, uh, we've got a topic, uh, we've got our mailbag, people that write to us. Uh, we've got a, a segment about faking injuries in college football. Um, we also have about the ACT test has been affected by the coronavirus for high school football players. And uh, I'm going to talk about David Feaster at Glenbrook High School in Menden, Louisiana. Let's go ahead and get into it, into our first segment. Um, and that's about the... Uh, how the coronavirus is affecting high school football and all sports with the ACT test. And what it's doing is prior to spring, basically around the time all this came up where, you know, with, with the coronavirus, there was going to be an ACT test, a final ACT test for the current seniors in high school right now that are signing college scholarships or just kids that want to go to college. They were going to have one more attempt to improve their ACT score, whether they had a 15, a 14, a 16 on their test. You need a 17 to get in most colleges. Some colleges, a 23, like LSU, you need at least a 23 or, or, or um, a sliding scale high ACT or high GPA with a, it's a balance out. Or some colleges, you need a 28 or a 30 or a 31. And some kids were trying to get that 28 and they had a 27. Or maybe some kids had a 28, they're trying to get a 30. Or some kids, again, had a 15 and they needed a 17 with a 2.0 GPA to get to a D2 school, okay? Or you needed a, you know, a 23 to get into LSU as just a student and you had a 22. So the NCA is going to have to come up with something to either waive and allow some of these kids go to college that were close, like maybe a point away, to go along with some summer school. Because, you know, summer school has been going on for 40, 50 years. You you can only get a couple of credits or a couple of core classes over the summer. And kids are having to do that, too, to get into colleges. Maybe they needed a couple of core classes. Maybe they did not pass a couple of core classes. To get into Southern, LSU, McNeese, Northwestern, you know, Louisiana Tech, ULL, Tulane, you know, all those schools and states, some of them at McNeese. And so this is a, a nationwide effect because of the coronavirus, not only changing our lives completely, but from an athletic standpoint, from young men and women. This is really a game changer. And again, you know, in a great example, we talked to Haynesville's football coach the other day. Jace Lejeune did. David Franklin, a great guy. His dad, Coach Franklin, started all these, you know, state championships years ago for Haynesville. And now his son, David, has been there. It's, it's incredible. Almost 20 years now. It's incredible to even realize he's been there for that long. They have a lineman named Cameron Jackson who, you know, has been committed to LSU for months as an offensive tackle. We played D-line for Haynesville on O-line. 6'6", 285, lean, has a great future. But this could, this could in his case, as an example, he's, he's close to being qualified, but he needed another ACT attempt, and they didn't have the ACT uh, testing the final testing was not – they canceled it because of the coronavirus. So, you know, we're just I'd, – I'd like to see if the NCAA will waive and let kids like him become eligible to, so he can enroll in a college or have the attempt to do another ACT or come up with a different method, maybe online somehow. I, don't, I know it's a whole different world to do an ACT unsupervised maybe, but I, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it, but – This is going to affect hundreds of men and women that are trying to go to college for athletics that are current seniors in high school that are going to be enrolling in colleges this summer. 
again, what are, what's the NCAA going to do? And hopefully they have some kind of plan in place right now. And hopefully something will come out in the next week or two because we're getting close. You know, we, we don't know when everything's going to open up back up, but we do need to know, you know, who can get into college and who can't and, and what's going to happen. It not only affected the 220 class, the kids that are seniors in high school, but the 221 class, the kids that are going to be seniors next year, that didn't get a chance to take their first ACT t- test their first attempt to be qualified for spring. And, you know, in the normal world, when we're all out there and, and, he, and parents are taking kids on campuses for career day, which is in spring, usually have spring football games, which we're not going to have this year for college football teams. But usually it goes hand-in-hand hand before the spring game where there's career days at these colleges where you can take your son. You're invited. you got to be invited to an LSU or Northwestern or Grambling or wherever in the state. You get to tour the campus. This is unofficial, unofficial visit. And you get to be shown around academically and athletically. And usually it's the kids that are already qualified, right, that have their test that they took pre-spring. Well, there's no test. So all these 221 kids, they're behind eight ball now. They didn't get a chance to take that test to see where they need help or where they need to improve, and whether it's math, English, history, wherever they didn't do good on the test. You know, if some of them, let's say, scored a 15 and they needed an 18, they don't even know where they are on that. So the NCAA also needs to arrange a date and I guess somehow do it online if, if there's not going to be school again this year possibly where you're not physically at school and everything's on the computer at home. But then again, some kids don't have computers. So the NCAA is going to have to waive, I think, some kids that were close, that were really close to qualifying that this affected by not getting a chance to take that last ACT attempt prior to spring that they didn't have. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, and we're going to be going to segment two. We'll be right back. Parents, are you looking for advice on getting your high school athlete recruited by the right college? Lee Brakeen is your answer. Lee has been doing it for over 30 years. He knows the ropes, and more importantly, he knows the people. Lee offers turnkey service from evaluation, creating highlight tapes in the correct format, and complete guidelines for effective communication with the schools. No matter the sport, girl or boy, no matter what grade your child is in, let Lee Brakeen help match your child to the right college fit. Go to our website, lafootballmagazine.com, and get connected today. Welcome back, Lee Brakeen. Uh Really a great show today. Uh, you know, segment two, we're going to be talking about our spotlight of the week. Our high school spotlight of the week is Madison Prep High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Coached by Landry Williams. A little background on Landry Williams. Landry's been a coach for several years. He went to Glen Oaks High School. He was a great receiver, played at Southern University, was a great college football player. And he's really a great role model for these kids at Madison Prep. He's done a great job of continuing what Mike Roach started, who was the first coach for Madison Prep. Mike was a college football player. He prepped at Capitol High School. He coached at Southern Lab. Was the head coach at Capitol at one time. Mike is now retired right now, Mike Roach. You might remember the name Malcolm Roach's son started at defensive tackle this year, DN for Texas University. And Malcolm will probably get drafted in the first four rounds uh, this month in the NFL draft. But Madison Prep, I don't want to give all the information out. We'll have that in our preview issue this late summer or September. But we want to talk about two of their current seniors that signed with colleges back in February, Joel Williams and Major Burns. Joel Williams Signed with Kentucky, six foot one, two hundred pounds, corner, big corner. Usually your corners are about five ten to six feet, 
170, 180. This guy's 200 pounds, 6'1", and he's fluid in his hips. And, and, and in layman terms, to a non-coach hearing this, means for a big guy, he's very agile to guard quick players in space, meaning his hips are loose, he's not stiff. Really, really not – you don't see that many corners like that come out. He's, I think he's the best corner to come out of Louisiana this past year. I think Kentucky got him a steal. I think he was LSU good to come in and play right away, at, even in LSU. Again, you don't see big corners like this every day. And I don't get into rankings. I get into what I see from my eyes going to games in full pads. I'm old school. I think a lot of coaches can respect that. Because where we are with recruiting, it's more about camps, pad, no pads, helmet, shorts, the way you look. Well, it's more than just the way you look. If, if you're a football player, you got to show that you're a football player in a game, which a lot of it's being aggressive, high effort, obviously your speed. The measurables do matter, but if you don't have measurables, there are kids that are special, you know, like Kevin Falk. Karen Crow, LSU. We know the history with Kevin Falk, Hall of Famer. Probably will be in the NFL Hall of Fame at some point with the Patriots because of his versatility. Five foot seven, five eight, two hundred pound running back. I mean, not didn't have the measurables, but again, you if you're special, you're special. But Joel Williams is a steal for Kentucky. They also have Kelvin Joseph sitting out, who was at LSU, who was suspended who played at Scotlandville High School. Kelvin was one of the best DBs I'd ever seen come out of Baton Rouge outside of Chad Jones and a couple of others. Kelvin, I don't know, just had some, some, some suspensions at LSU. Maybe it was maturing. I don't know. Hopefully he's, he's ready to go and needs to do the things he needs to do. And at Kentucky, he'll be given a new opportunity to show how great he can be. He's got the tools. So they're going to have two DBs from Baton Rouge in their defensive backfield at the University of Kentucky. The other young man, Major Burns, who signed this past February, was with Georgia. He signed with Georgia and uh, Kirby Smart. Major was committed to LSU for several months. LSU withdrew their uh, scholarship the week before and the young man signed with Georgia because he had the pick of the litter. He could go anywhere. Um, the difference between Joel Williams, in my opinion, and Major Burns is that one is more polished right now than the other one. Joel is 200 pounds, ready to go. Major is about 180, 6'2 and a half. Great kid. Just needs to fill out. And maybe he will prior to September, but with the coronavirus, it's hard to work out. It's hard to do all those things because there's no system right now for these kids. But Major will be a great player at Georgia. His natural position is safety, and he played corner safety receiver at Madison Prep along with Joel Williams. He played receiver, too, for the team. But Major Burns will be a great player. He's about 180, needs to get up to about 195, 200, which he will probably be about 210 when he's done. And he can run, and he's long, man. He's so long, he can carry a lot of weight. He might end up being about 215 when he's done. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, segment three, we're going to talk about Glenbrook High School in Menden, Louisiana. We'll be right back. Make sure to check out our website at LAFootballMagazine.com for all the latest recruiting information statewide. This week, check out all of our recruiting interviews with all the latest prospects and coaches. Also, make sure to check out our website and stay up to date with our TV show each week. That website, again, is LAFootballMagazine.com. Welcome back. Lee Burkeen, you're uh, listening to our podcast today out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, in segment three, want to go ahead and talk about Glenbrook High School. People are like, who's Glenbrook? Now, if you're out of the Shreveport area, Everybody knows who Glenbrook is, right? But if you're not in that Shreveport area or Monroe or Alexandria, you, you might not know who Glenbrook, the school is, because they're not in the LHSA. They've been in the MAIS League for many years. They've been in three national state championship games in the history of the school. 
They were runner-up in all three. These were in the 80s, and I think 79 was the was one game they were in in, the, in a state title game, but these were all in the 80s. I think 79, 80, and 86. So there's a lot of history at Glenbrook High School. Again, they're not in the LHSA, but they're in the MAIS. Soon to be, maybe, LHSA. They're going to be applying to be in the LHSA, which will probably be uh, a year from now when they'll actually play in the LHSA. And a friend of mine just got the head job. He's been the athletic director, um, and he was also the uh, offensive coordinator the past two years. People might have forgot about him, but I did, and he's a great coach, great person, David Feaster. And if you remember Coach David Feaster, he did a great job at Parkway High School in Bossier City. You know, he coached Brandon Harris, Keandre Woodtee that went to Oklahoma State, the beginning years, Rodgers, the other quarterback, Justin Rodgers, who's now at UNLV, has signed with TCU. He had three great quarterbacks. Was very instrumental in the early career of Terrace Marshall, who's now at LSU. Lloyd Cole, who's a walk-on DB at LSU from Parkway, played under Coach Feaster. Actually, Lloyd Cole's probably the best walk-on. People don't even know who he is at LSU. He lettered last year as a walk-on, was came transferred from Grambling College. Uh, last year. David Feaster is going to do wonders at Glenbrook. Wherever David Feaster has coached, he has done a credible job. I mean, when he was at Manny High School, we're talking many years ago, he had Manny High School doing phenomenal. Now, currently, Jess Curtis is doing a great job at Manny. But the one that started it all was, was David Feaster several years ago. But David's going to do a great job at, at Glenbrook. They have some good football players. They have a chance to have a very good team in 2020. Now, when you're playing eight-man football or 11-man football, there's still 11-man, but the, you don't – you know, that you're going to be playing kids both sides of the football because they don't have 50-man rosters or 40-man rosters. Very similar to Central Private, Silliman in Clinton, Louisiana, Oak Forest, Bowling Green, Prairie View, Tallulah Academy, Briarfield. You know, these are all MAIS teams. And there's another school, River Oaks. So there's a lot of good teams in this league, a lot of good players, a lot of good coaches. And David Feaster has a son. I want to promote this for David. I mean, he's got a good, legitimate recruit who's his son. His name is Sammy Feaster. Sammy's going to be a senior this upcoming season. He's a wide receiver. He's got a tight end body. He's 6'3". 200 pounds, straight speed runs 4-5 in the 40. Sammy Feaster has a chance to be a guy that could go to a 1-AA D1 school in the end. And actually, he's a guy that I think will be about 220 when he's filled out and be a great tight end in college. That's just what I think. But Sammy Feaster is the son of David Feaster. And like I said, Remember the name. He's going to have a chance to be one of those under-the-radar recruits that might end up at a 1AA school when it's over, might walk on to D1, and be a great player. He's a 4-0 student. He's got a 26 on his ACT. Just remember that name. He's got good hands. And like I said, he runs a 4-5 in the 40s, so once he puts on another 15 pounds, 20 pounds in college, he'll be about 215, 220. And he's all of 6'3". You know, David's 6'3". But I want to give a shout-out to David Feaster, and I think uh, he's going to do a great job at Glenbrook High School. Where's Glenbrook? It's in Menden, Louisiana. Menden's right outside of basically Bossier City, which is a, a you know suburb of the Shreveport area. Menden is, uh, is one of those schools that's close enough to go to, you know, you can be in West Monroe, 
are rusting within an hour. And on the other way, other side, you can be 40, 45 minutes in Shreveport. It's kind of in the middle there, you know, in North Louisiana. Raymond Tate played at Menden High School, an old former running back with the Houston Cougars, played for Coach Morris back in the day, back in the 80s, the late Raymond Tate. James Britt was a great all-SEC all DB from Menden. But Glenn Brooks in Menden. And if they go to the LHSA, which they plan on being in the LHSA in about a year, not this year, but the following year, I think they're gonna. I think David Feaster is going to build a heck of a program. I really do. Kids are going to want to play for David. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to go on to talk about faking injuries in college football. We'll be right back. If you're a parent that needs a highlight tape and you need consoling advice on how to deal with the recruiting process, please contact Lee Burkeen, who has had over 30 years of experience dealing with college coaches and making highlight tapes all over the country. For more information, please contact Lee Burkeen at lburkeen at aol.com. That is lburkeen at aol.com. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Lee Burkeen, and uh, we're going to go ahead and go into college football. This is, this is something I think that if you're listening to the show, and you're a really diehard football fan like I am, especially college football, in the past five years, I think we would all agree that we're getting tired of these really bad acting jobs by kids falling on the ground that are not hurt faking injuries to slow the momentum of the offense. And there's no flags. There's no penalties. There's nothing being done. And I think there should be. I think if the game is on the line and your defense is getting destroyed and you have a guy go down on the ground that's not hurt to stop the game, it's really a timeout, it's not. It's an advantage and it's, it shouldn't be – used anymore, I don't think. It used to be kind of funny when it started, but now it's becoming not so funny. So some teams are actually losing games because when you're in sync, like Joe Burrow's in sync or last year, you saw I saw Auburn do it a couple of times. I saw it in different games all year long in college football, Big Ten, Pac-12. You know, a team is like winning 41 to 40 and the other team has the ball that has 40 points, and they're trying to get to the end zone. There's 40 seconds left, and they're five wide, I mean five receivers. The defense is exhausted. Somebody goes down. They're not hurt. They're just, they need rest. They need to regroup, and that's giving them a timeout, especially when we don't have a timeout left. I think like in the NBA or the MLB, MLB, if you're at the bat, if you're batting in the, in the Major League Baseball League, if you're MLB League, if, you're, if you lean into the ball, obviously you're trying to get hit by the ball. The ump, if he thinks that you intentionally leaned into the ball, hit, they'll call you out. In basketball, if you're flopping, meaning you're faking going down when a guy scores on you, not all the time, but half the time they'll not call a foul. They'll say, you're, you know, it's... You were faking that. You know, made it look like the offensive player knocked him down when it, they didn't even touch him and they went down. I mean, it just try to act, acting job, right? But college football is the only identity that they don't call anything if a guy falls on the ground and it's obvious. Now, obviously, there's a lot of injuries. And we don't like to see injuries. But if it's a real bad acting job and it's very obvious the guy's not hurt and he goes down on the ground to stop the clock, I think there should be a flag. You call a five-yard flag for someone off sides, why can't you call a five-yard flag for, for bad acting, faking an injury? I think the refs need to come together and say, look, this is costing people games. And this has given the defense the uh, advantage in a close game. And I think if it gets to be in a close game in the future, they need to call a flag and say, look, this kid's not hurt. It's obvious. It's bad. It's, just, it's not good. And you started seeing this when more teams went to the spread. 
which is in the last 10 years. You know, you used to see like the Air Raid in Lubbock with Texas Tech, Mike Leach, but there weren't a lot of people doing it. Now everybody can go five wide in the last three minutes of a game. And teams are tired, and they're exhausted, and they need a, they need an advantage. And to not lose the game, they, you know, we're just seeing it more and more and more. And I think something needs to be done about it. And I think I don't. Th- I think I'm speaking for a lot of fans. Let's call a five yard penalty. You won't do it again, or maybe you won't do it as much. We're gonna go ahead and take a break, and when we come back, we're gonna go to our next segment, which is uh which is our high school team. I'm going to spotlight North Lake Christian in Slidell, Louisiana. We'll be right back. Parents, are you looking for advice on getting your high school athlete recruited by the right college? Lee Brakeen is your answer. Lee has been doing it for over 30 years. He knows the ropes, and more importantly, he knows the people. Lee offers turnkey service from evaluation, creating highlight tapes in the correct format, and complete guidelines for effective communication with the schools. No matter the sport, girl or boy, no matter what grade your child is in, let Lee Brakeen help match your child to the right college fit. Go to our website, lafootballmagazine.com, and get connected today. Welcome back, everyone. Hope everybody's safe and healthy as a family, as a community in our country, in our state, in Louisiana. I want to go ahead and spotlight North Lake Christian. It's a 2A school in Slidell, Louisiana. A great, great school, great football team, great athletics in all sports. This is a program that I've watched from the beginning. You know, they're, they're like 20-plus years old, not, not any more than that, which I consider kind of a new school when a lot of schools are 50, 60, 70, 80 years old. They've had tons of winning seasons. I don't even know how many losing seasons they had, maybe in the beginning. But what a competitive bunch of kids that go to North Lake Christian. None of their athletic teams are deep on depth, meaning they don't carry big rosters in any sport but yet they're really superior at times in different sports every year, especially football. They usually have about 18, 19 good kids every year that play. They might dress 30, 40 kids, but they play the same 18. Great coaches. Every now and then you'll see North Lake Christian have a Division I prospect or one AA kid that will sign either in basketball, track, football, or soccer or softball, or or all the sports they have. But I want to spotlight their coach, who's a very interesting name. People might not realize this, but the head coach at North Lake Christian is James Willis. Now let that sink in for a second. James Willis. How do we know James Willis? Well, James Willis was an All-American linebacker at Auburn in football. He was one of the great linebackers to ever come out of Auburn University. He was a high draft pick in the NFL and played in the NFL several seasons as a linebacker. He also coached for the New Orleans Saints. And now he's the head coach at North Lake Christian. He, I had a chance to talk to James about a month ago, right before the, the virus, right before coronavirus and everything. I had a chance to talk to him over a phone, and – James Merritt, a Louisiana native. His son is currently a wide receiver for Northwestern State in Natchitoches. He's a redshirt receiver, got a lot of talent, 6'3", about 180, his son, who also played at North Lake Christian High School. So I'm very excited to see what James Willis is going to do being a new coach at North Lake Christian. I thought Anthony Agresta did a great job for many years at North Lake. And now he's uh, passed the baton to James Willis. But, you know, it's not every day you pick up a head coach with the resume that James Willis has. It's incredible. Just thought I'd throw that tidbit out today. We're going to go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we're going to have our final segment, our mailbag, which is people writing in with questions to our staff. We'll be right back. 
Make sure to check out our website at LAFootballMagazine.com for all the latest recruiting information statewide. This week, check out all of our recruiting interviews with all the latest prospects and coaches. Also, make sure to check out our website to stay up to date with our TV show each week. That website, again, is LAFootballMagazine.com. Welcome back, everyone. We're going to go on to our mailbag segment. Um, We have a question from actually Monroe, Louisiana. John from Monroe wanted to know, where did Andrew Brister sign, quarterback from Neville High School, son of Bubby Brister, who played for the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Minnesota Vikings, the Denver Broncos, the Philadelphia Eagles. I mean, Bubby had a long career. He started with Pittsburgh. But his son, Andrew Brister, To answer your question, John, in Monroe, signed with Northern Colorado. Not Colorado State, not Colorado, but Northern Colorado. A 1AA school. Very good program. Actually, because of Bubby Brewster's contacts in the state of Colorado, playing for the Denver Broncos, uh, his son's now going to continue his college football career in, in Colorado, at Northern Colorado. And I think Andrew Brewster... Let me just say this. Bubby Brewster, when he was at Neville, was polished when he came out of the eighth grade. I mean, Bubby Brewster is still to this day the most talented quarterback to ever play at Neville High School. He signed with Alabama out of high school. And then before he even enrolled, he enrolled at Tulane. And then he left Tulane, and he's, you know, the rest is history. He had a great career at Northeast College, which is now ULM and Monroe. He was an All-American there in the Hall of Fame at at Northeast. Had a long NFL career like we just talked about. But Andrew Brister, not not polished, just a later bloomer. You know, just not not his dad in that facet to where he was just so polished and everything was just, you know, he wasn't a national recruit. But Andrew was always a tall kid that was real lean, and when he started his high school career, it was at Mandeville High School. So he left Mandeville High School to go to Neville High School to play for one of the great coaches in the state, Mickey McCarty. And Andrew, his senior year, blossomed. I mean, he put on weight. He went from about 180 to about 200 pounds, 195, 6'4 in height. He's a little taller than his dad. And I think he's a year away from being a real good quarterback in college. He's more of a... He's that drop back passer build, you know. He's he's got that Tom Brady build. Not to say he's Tom Brady, but he's got that Brady build, and he's got the feet in the pocket. You know, he's not going to be known for a dual threat guy like his dad was, but you know that's okay. Everybody's different, but Andrew is going to be a very good drop back quarterback at Northern Colorado. He'll probably redshirt his first year, and I think after one more year. He'll probably get up to about 210, 215 in weight. And then I think the kid will blossom. I think he, you know, a couple of years at Northern Colorado, you know, we're all going to be saying, well, man, I wonder if that's Bubby Brister's son. Well, I'm letting you know today. Keep up with Northern Colorado about, think about a year from now. You know, stay tuned to their stats and keep up with their scores. They're probably not as relevant as like Colorado in the newspaper or Colorado State. But it's a good school, and I'm happy for Andrew. I think he's going to do well. And and there's a lot of contacts in that state, in that area, through Bubby Brister. He played for the Denver Broncos. Uh, Actually, Bubby did radio for the Denver Broncos for a while when he retired and uh, had a chance to, to, to back up John Elway for many years, which was a great gig. He didn't have to play a lot, and John got hurt. You know, Bubby would come in, and if if he was hurt, he'd come in and play. But it's toward the the later part of Bubby's career. He was over 10 years in the league and, man, making really good money. And I call it clipboard holding. You get to hold a clipboard and and be a part of the team as a coach on the sideline with the staff. And, you know, people love Bubby Brewster, and he was able to play many years in the NFL. But Andrew Brewster is going to be great, John, for Northern Colorado. We're going to go ahead and wrap up our show today. And, I wanted to tell anybody, don't be shy. Write into us. You can email me at 
lbrekeen at aol.com. That's L-B-R-E-C-H-E-E, two E's, N as in Nancy, at aol.com. And email us any question you have. I mean, if you're uh, nine years old to 75, 80 years old, email us, you know, anything. We all love a high school. We all have love and passion for a college or a pro team. And, and if you have anything, even, even basketball or baseball, you know, I cover the big three, even track. If you have any questions, please feel free to write to us. Uh, check out our website, LAFootballMagazine.com. If you can't remember my name, you can just send us a message to the website. That's LAFootballMagazine.com. And if you want to pull up our TV show, you can go to YouTube and just type in LA Football TV Magazine, and you can pull up one of our shows from the last 15 years. From this past season, you can pull up some shows. But really enjoyed it today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope we learned some stuff. I always want to share information to the public. And, and look, during these times, I wish everybody health, great health. Stay safe. And we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to the Sports Scouting Report podcast with Lee Brookings.